Hello everyone, and this is Brenda. Welcome to Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque live painting workshop on January 9th at 7 Central Time. And we're going to finish up our Frosty and Friends box tonight, hopefully. So we have um, Jack here in the middle that we finished up last time. We have Cuddle on my left side, which is antiqued. And then we have our Putts, Retro Putts on my right side, and we will um, start with him tonight. But there is one thing I wanted to show you first because I just realized it as I'm sitting here. So this jack was color washed. And if you remember, we color washed with our navy. And is the same night that he was color washed, he was dry brushed with the white. So you can see there's a blue hue um, to his white snow. And our jack that we worked on during the live painting, he was color washed and then I did not... Uh, paint the white on him, dry brush the white on him until the following week. So he has more of a pure white, white, and I'm not, you can't really maybe see it on the camera so much. Maybe if I move it up, you can t tell more. So the one in my right, the white is more blue, and that's because the white was dry brushed right after it was color washed, and the one on the left was color washed, and then a week later, it was, the dry brushing was started. So that's why you have the whiter white. So that's the difference in waiting to dry brush after you color wash. You'll notice that with your colors. So I just wanted to point that out in case you wondered if there's a difference. So we'll put them aside and we'll grab our jack. Not our jack, our putts. And I do still have my cough, so I got a cough drop in my mouth, so hopefully we make it through the night without too much hacking here. So we had color washed our um, putts and then we dry brushed him a little bit of white and then we dry brushed some more white and then last week we painted out his hat so tonight we're going to touch up his um, bow and put his little red button on do his eyes and then add his snow and his glitter and his little snowflake so I'm going to start with I'm probably just going to use one of my little liner brushes to do this it'll be the Royal Majestic 4595 Let's see if I can bring it up so you can see it. And it's just a nice um, little liner brush. And I'm going to use my medium blue, my Duncan OS457 medium blue. And I just want to paint out my little bow that's on him. So let's see. Where, and I'm just going to use my liner brush. I'm going to pull my brush through and turn it clockwise in my hand to get a nice point on it. And I can see where my, because we dry brushed it, the white is on his little um, bow. So I'm just going to go where the indent is. And we're just going to uh, paint that out blue. You could also dry brush it. It's just a lot quicker to paint it out. Maybe you want to move the camera in, Courtney. So you could dry brush this with the medium blue. Um, I just paint it out because it's a lot quicker. And Courtney's moving the camera in, so I'm going to move my um, brush a little bit. So I do have him anchored onto the table, and I'm holding him, and I anchor my hand onto him. I start in the center of the bow, and I merge towards my edge there. That way I can line it up really well without... Um, not lining it up, that just works really well instead of starting right where you want because sometimes it isn't where you really think it is. And then you want to brush that out. So we'll continue all the way around here. And you could do this bow in red or navy blue and any color is green. I just kind of stayed with the same blue. And then I'm going to turn him. And we'll do the rest of the bow here. Vicky's asking what color is it? Um, so Vicky's asking what color. I'm just using the medium blue, the Duncan medium blue that we did the color wash with. And it could be any color. It could be green, navy, whatever, whatever color you like, purple. I've done them in different colors. People do like the different colors. I just stayed with the medium blue because to keep the colors down in the box for you guys. I'm just lining this out real quick. I'm 
And I like to draw the brush towards me rather than pushing it. But sometimes I go the other way too, like I am now. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. Just brush your paint out. And you could even make his little button blue if you wanted. I did make it red just for a little different pop of color. So we got that all painted. And I'm going to wash out my brush. And then I'm going to grab, you can grab either the barnyard red or the real red. I'm just going to grab the barnyard red because we're going to use that on our cuddle. And I'm just going to use a drop of it for now. And I got to mix that up a little bit. And we're just going to paint out his little button. And again, I'm resting him on the table and my painting hand on him. You want a nice steady hand when you're outlining little outlines like that. And I'm just going out to the indent of the button. Make it nice and round. And we'll have to come back and do another coat on there. Now you can see I didn't use the rust on there first, so you can see through the red. So that's why I do like to use the rust, but since I don't have it open already tonight, I'm just going to do a couple coats and we'll call it. It'll work that way too. So now I'm letting that blue dry because I want to dry brush a little bit. So I'm going to grab some of the black. And I just have the OS Duncan 479, sorry, OS 476 black. So you just want an acrylic black stain. And I just need a little drop because I'm going to do his eyes. And just like last week, I'm going to take my brush, move the water in here so you can see it, hopefully. Um, yep, I just wanted to see. So I'm just going to take my water, and I'm going to dip my um, brush into that water, and I, so there's water on it. And I'm going to take that and lay that into my black just to thin it out and work that out a little bit. That way it's nice and like ink thin. And that's all about, that's about all it takes is one dip in the water like that. So now I'm turning my brush as I roll it through that black paint so I get a nice point on it. I'm loading up that liner. That's why liners are good. They, they hold paint like that so you can draw a further line, line further. So now we just need to do his little eyeballs here. And I'm going to start at 1 o'clock. I usually don't start at 12 because that's just an obvious point. If it doesn't match up, it's real obvious then. And I'm going to draw around. I'll come back over here to 1 and draw it back around. And we'll fill this in. And I'm just taking it right to the indent, trying not to go past the indent. And if you have a good liner, um, that is a lot of your, um, to your benefit to have a better liner than a, than not, because um, it can be really frustrating to do eyes if you don't have a good liner. So now, like there, I didn't, I gob that right at 12 o'clock, and that's why I don't like to start at 12 o'clock. It just makes it obvious when you mess it up. But we can touch it up with some white. So I'll turn him so I can still see a little bit of a line around the bottom there where the little indent is. I'm not sure if you can see it. But I'm going to um, get some black in there. And just bring it right around. And we'll see if we can fix that top without making it too much worse. So there we go. I got it evened out more. So now I want to look at the eyes and make sure they look about the same. Looks like it needs to come over a little bit on this left side. And that looks pretty good. So 
So there he's got his little eyes. Just touch a little more black up. I'm going to wash out my brush and dry it. I'm going to go back into my red. And we're going to touch up our red because you can see his button now. You can see through that red and you can see the white. If I had done the rust first, um, you wouldn't be able to see that. That just covers better with that rust underneath it. And you could use rust or terracotta. But that's just to show you that, that rust really does help underneath that red. So there we go. We got his little eyes. We got his little um, red button. Now we need a little bit of white. And we're going to shake that up. And I'm going to take a drop of it. And again, I'm going to um, show you my water. So I'm going to just go into my water, get that brush wet, take that and put it into that white paint. And you can see how that thins that out just a little bit. So it's thin like ink instead of like thick like paint. I'm going to move my water. So I'm going to draw my brush through that. And I'm turning it clockwise between my thumb and my um, index finger and that's putting a nice point on it and it's loading the brush up then I usually like to take it one more time just to get a little bit off and now we want a little um, C stroke here in his eye for a highlight or you could just put a dot and I press down and then lift up And do it on the same right side of both eyes. Push down and lift up. And we have our nice little C strokes. And then you can take the point of your brush and get some white and put it right at the top. And just a little bit to the left of that for a little bit more of a highlight. Or if you have a ball stylus, you can use that. But again, I'm resting my painting hand on him. you got to have a nice steady hand for that. So there he's got his nice little eyes. Now the one on the right is a little bigger than the one on the left, so we're going to, so we can get them both the same size. Now i got one a lot bigger. So that's where the ball stylus is coming handy because you just get the same size right off the bat. So there we go. He's got his cute little eyes. I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to grab a little dry brush here. I think we'll go with our, um, it could be flat or round. I'm going to go with this flat one. It's our Royal and Langnickel um, size zero. It would have been probably in the last box or the first box. Royal and Langnickel size zero. Well, it was in one of the boxes, the subscription boxes as a flat. I think it was the first box because the last one was, yeah. Anyway, so the Royal and Langlickel size zero, you can use the round or a flat. It was a Woodland Animal box. If you got that box, that's the one I'm using. Um, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of white and brush that out on my paper. And now I just want to highlight his bow a little bit with white. So I'm just going to brush on there a little bit. Just kind of brushing across the texture. So this brush had brown in it before, and you can it's actually coming through my white a little bit. I do like to keep a completely separate set of brushes that are just for white. That keeps your um, white like a pure white, even though it's white on here. There's like a brown hue to it. So I'm just going to um, brush a little bit on the band around the the necktie here, just to Give it a little bit of highlighting of the white. Come back and get the tops of my bow. Just where the, you want to think when you're highlighting, you want to think about where the light would hit stuff. So the light would hit this top part of the outside of the bow, the top part of the center of the bow, and again, the top part of the outside of the bow the most. So that's where you want your most of your highlight. And then we'll just do one little brush across our little button there to give that some highlight. So he's pretty much done. If you wanted, you could blush his cheeks. I didn't do that because that would have been another pink color to have in our box. But you could, if you had some pink, just dry brush it a little bit. So there he's, he's um, where we need him to be. So at this point, I would seal him with the aerosol 
Um, probably the satin sealer, so it has like a little bit of an icy glaze look to it. Or you could use the uh, matte, which would have a flat look. I don't know if you'd really want the glossy, but you could. Or if you want, you could use the brush-on sealer. And once he's sealed, then you can put your snow on. And our little, um, we had a little pot of snow in our package, in your subscription box. It's the Duncan No Fire Snow. It's a Duncan ceramic product. And there's plenty in there. So I'm just going to use my little dry brush because I don't want to wash out another one. So I just dip in there and get my snow. That's after he's sealed. And you can put it wherever you want. I just put it like on his little button and on his little hat. So we'll, you just put some on your brush and then you just... Um, lay it on the surface where you want it. You don't want to get your fingers into it because it'll smear it all over. And it takes a couple hours for it to dry really, really well. So it all depends how much you want. You can see you just take your brush and just lay it on him here and there. Put a little on his button. Well, maybe a little even on his nose, what the heck. And then I'll wash that out, put my cap back on. Then I also, you also had a package or a little container of silver glitter. And I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to put him on a piece of paper towel. Or you could put him on a paper plate. And I just want to grab a little bit of that glitter out of there. And sprinkle that on our snow, and because the snow is wet, that'll dry right to it. And you can turn them upside down and give them a little puff of air. And that'll get the excess off. And then besides that, we had a little snowflake in there. And I don't think Courtney has any E6000 glue because I took it home on her. <laughs> to get her a container. So then you had another little package with the snowflake in it. Um, so you can take, there's a little glue thing on the back of here, but I added some extra, like the E6000. I just put that on the back of there. And then I put that little snowflake right on his little hat. And that sticks quite well, but you might want to put a little E6000 or a little tacky glue or hot glue on there. Um, and they'll just hold it on better. So there you have your little putts. He's all done and cute. So we'll set him aside so he can dry. And then I'm going to get rid of this glitter paper. Oh, no, we only have him. Courtney asked if we have the mold for um, the putts. And we, we only the little one. We don't have. There's another one where he's kind of medium size and he's holding um, a Christmas tree. I want that one. Um, I, just, I was able to get it from our local shop, but. Um, she's not available anymore, so I can't get it, so I, I would like that mold. So I'm just washing out my little dry brush. I want to get that snow out of there. And now i got to dust this gl glitter off of me because I can get it everywhere, it's literally. So now we're going to grab our cuddle up and make sure our snow is shut. And you can save this snow. As uh, long as it doesn't dry out, you can reuse it for other little projects. So I tried... Um, are cuddle up in two different versions. The middle version is more antique looking and it's painted with the French vanilla. So if you like that look, you can paint it with the French vanilla. Um, then the one on my left, which he's up close now, I did half white and half French vanilla mixed together. So he's got like the in-between look. And then the final one that um, the family and everyone liked is actually this guy in my right hand, and he's actually painted with the white and then antiqued with the gold. So that's what we're going to do tonight is the white and the barnyard red. But if you would want a very antique, you could use the French vanilla. A little bit of antique, use half French vanilla and half white mixed together. So we're going to go with the white, though. So we'll get him painted up here quick tonight. And I'm just going to go with my... Um, my nylon round brush, it's Royal and Lane Nickel, and I don't see the size on it anymore, but I believe it's a size 8. So I'm going to use, use my white. I'm going to add it right to my white that I had before. Get some of this glitter off of me. 
And we're just going to, you want to usually um, dust your piece before you start, although that we dust them before we ship them. But just use a, another brush. And so I'm just going to paint out my white real quick here. And I'm, I don't have to be real careful getting it up, up to the red because we'll go over that. We'll line that out um, when we do the red so we don't have to line out the white and the red. That just takes extra time. So it's okay if you get it on your red areas. You just want to make sure it's brushed out so you don't have ridges like that. You just brush it out. Just go back and forth with your brush. Just go right up along there. And if you get some on there like that, just brush it out. And I'll, as always, make sure you do your bottoms and on that inside edge there a little bit because that way when someone picks it up and look at it, they see the nice top and the nice bottom. You don't want to have an ugly bottom when you have a nice top. So we'll just brush him out here quick. So I hope everyone had a good week. I'm still getting over this cold crap that I had for the, I think it's the third week of it. Cordy says she didn't get it, and I hope she don't get it. <laughs> Let's see. Seems like you guys enjoyed Cordy's post today with the box, guessing what's in that box. Um, it was a big box. It was expen kind of an expensive box. It's a heavy box. A lost box. <laughs> it ended up being a lost box because I usually have the, everything shipped to my house and and then bring it to Courtney's and she inventories it and logs it and puts it on her shelves for shipping. But I put in a street that didn't exist. I made up a street in my mind. I thought it was um, Kirk. Kirkpatrick is the street I thought it was. And she actually lives on Kirkland. And there's no Kirkpatrick in Appleton. Um so at 5 o'clock yesterday, she called FedEx to see where our package was because it said it was delivered. And Did they know where it was at that point? No. Um, so when she called, they didn't know where it was. Um, but they moved, what, three years ago? So by chance, they went to their old address. They, they told me where they dropped it. They the oh, at that point, they had told her that they dropped it at an address, which happened to be their old address. And she's never had a, a FedEx package delivered there, so I don't know why. We don't know why that that address got picked out of all the addresses in Appleton. So they drove over there, and there was our package, fortunately. fortunately. Um, then she called FedEx, and they kept telling her that the address on the package was the address that it was delivered to, which was not right. It was the wrong – I mean, I had the – it was just, <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be delivered to Kirkland, but I put in Kirkpatrick, but it ended up at a totally different address. No one knows how. And no one knows how or why the, you, you, the FedEx guy took it there. But anyway, she brought it home and we got it. <laughs> so now I know not to use a made-up street, street name. I don't know why I have Kirk, Kirkpatrick in my head instead of Kirkland, but... So I'm just brushing out my white, going back and forth, just bringing it right up to the next um, color area, like of the um, the scarf and the hat. And it's okay that we're going over it because we're going to line out the red when we do that anyway, so we don't have to line out the white and the red. So we're actually antiquing this guy. I guess I missed, missed to tell you that, that um, the technique we're using for this guy is called antiquing, and this is, was very popular like in the 80s and the 70s and until dry brushing came along. So we got him all done up here in white, and I just brushed back and forth. Make sure he's covered well. And I'm going to wash out my brush. So then Courtney posted the picture this morning, and... You guys had fun with the, guess what's in the box? <laughs> and no one was exact no. yet, so keep posting. We have some close guesses, but no exact guesses. So now I have my Barnyard Red, and that's our OS 503 Barnyard Red. 
And I'm just going to use my um, same brush here. Although I guess I'm going to switch to my liner brush first because now I do want to line it out um, before I, and then I'll fill it in with the other colors. So I'm going to rest him on the table and we're going to do all of his red areas with the barnyard red. And again, he's resting on the table, my hand's resting on him. Um, so we could also, I should have actually, I'm doing this wrong, I need to do my rust first, so I'll be doing a million coats of that red. So we're going to back up a step. Okay, so I'm going to back up and go to my Doc Holiday 28 Rust, or you can use Duncan Rust, or Mako Rust, or Terracotta. Um, so we're going to go back to our Rust and get that on there first. And we'll just I'll just start on the other arm, let that one dry. Otherwise, it is going to take twice the amount of red coats to get it red. So I'm just lining out my red where it meets the white and brushing it out. And I'll um, use the liner for that. And I need to steady him down here so I have nice straight lines. So I didn't even have time. Um, has everyone got their package, Courtney? Not everyone, but majority. Um, so Courtney watches the tracking on your packages. Um, so the February box was shipped on Monday. And most of you have yours, but not everyone. Um, are further away. People don't have theirs yet, but you should be getting them shortly. They all like that. Um, I guess everyone so far has commented that they, they like it, so that's good. Um, we had one boo-boo. Yeah. One of our customers got... Poor Vicky. Um, poor Vicky got a snowman that didn't have any holes in it for the pin lights, so she okay. left us no. Yeah. Um, right? <laughs> so it... So we, um, she left us know right away, and we got back to her, and we're sending her a, um, a new one with holes in it on Friday because I took them out of the kiln last night, and I had another batch and um, brought them to Courtney's tonight. So she'll be shipping that to Vicki um, tomorrow. So if you guys ever have a problem with your package, let us know because we'll take care of it right away. Um, we still, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, like Courtney says, she don't know how it happened. It, it's just something, I don't know, <laughs> because it's, a snowman with no holes in it, it should have like stuck out like a sore thumb. I actually made them for her to put on the website and I forgot to tell her it was in that box and none of us caught it. So it can happen. We try not to, but if you ever have a trouble with your box, let us know so we can correct it. Um, Courtney says, no, we haven't had breakage since um, July. And when we started shipping, we tried to package them really well. So knock on wood. And we even um, shipped the box, boxes to Australia and to Canada. So we're um, very fortunate. So Courtney's got me moving a little bit here. So I gotta anchor him down so I can get a straight line, otherwise we won't have a straight line. So let's see, we added, she added the Mako line of paint to our Brenda's brush strokes and bisque, so that's out there. Um, I think she's added a few other um, products on there as well. Um, she's got more to add, but it just, it just all takes time. I'm just going to line this out a little more here, brush it out. Um, we went through the, uh, let me see, it was Sunday when I was here, we went through the mold themes, or the actually the monthly themes, I guess you could call it, for the boxes um, from March through September. No, because September is the mummies for October. So through September, we um, have the themes all figured out and what molds they're going to be. And um, that order was placed on Tuesday, but it was um, not official until today. The invoice wasn't right, so they they had to redo it. And then I approved it today, so they'll um, be working on that going from tomorrow. 
That'll take about 10 days to two weeks usually to get the molds. Right, we even ordered, um, if anyone's seen the um, sloth that Clay Magic just announced, he's in with that batch, so you can look forward to him in one of the boxes. So it should be fun. Try to pick fun things and stuff that's popular for each month, um, like September is going to be for October again. So can't wait to get the molds and get them dried and start pouring them. I was only able to order three extra molds that weren't um, this box molds because of the cost. So we got a dog, a kitten, and a um, Ziggy the chameleon um, for our kids' kits that we're working on and that were quite popular for Christmas. And we should have those available for Easter. So I'm just going to turn him and hold him in my hand here now. And um, again, I'm gonna, I, li I like to start away from where I want. Like I want to um, outline my scarf along my face, but I start away from it so that I can see where my brush is and I can get it right where I want it. Because sometimes when you put it where you think, think it's the right spot, it really isn't. And, that, and these are just my tips for what I do for how I paint. I mean, everyone's got their own little things that they do, so do what works for you. Nothing's written in stone. There's always more than one way to do anything. So we'll get him lined out here in our rust. And then we can switch to a bigger brush and fill it in. See what else we're waiting for another order to come, which I'm not going to say what that is because Courtney wants to post that one and see what you guys thinks in that box. So it's all good stuff. New product too. And new and a new product, right? And a better product that I tested, um, that I got at the August show in Milwaukee and decided that we really, really liked them. So now we're going to be carrying that product. And it's going to be in your boxes for the second half of the year as your extra product. So we got him lined out. So now I'm going to lay that brush down and I'm just going to grab my eight round and I'm just going to um, brush the rest of him out here. Get a nice coat of rust on him. Let's see, this weekend I will be, I'm pouring snowmen, in, or not snowmen, I'm pouring birds and birdhouses for our February box. I'm about halfway through those. I'll be cleaning those this weekend, and then I'll be painting the sample set and posting that on Monday morning, so you'll be able to see what that's going to look like. And I'll be using those rub-on metallics that will be in your box as an extra, which is a um, really good extra. It's the full palette of the, I think there's six or seven uh, metallic colors in that palette. Looks like a watercolor palette and there's little pots of different um, metallic colors in it. I do like the Doc Holiday metallics, but they're not available anymore. So we were able to get these, and they'll work just, just as good. It's just a different product by a different company. So I'm just brushing out my rust here to get ready for our red. And you don't want to have any globs and rivers and you just want to brush it out nice just brush back and forth oh Courtney's giving you a treat here is the rub-on metallics that will be coming in the February boxes this whole palette um, it's about a $10 retail value 
So, yep. Yeah, so there's, um, let me see, we got a gold, a green, a cranberry, a silver, looks like a pewter, a purple, and a, like a turquoise. So a nice selection of colors. Um, they're just little, um, it's like a thick, it's like a solid form of paint. And you just dip your fingers in there and then rub it on your piece. So that's what we'll be working on with our um, February box, with our birds and our birdhouses. So I'm actually holding him with two fingers on the bottom and one finger on top so I'm not getting the rust all over my white. And I'm just brushing out my rust here, getting him covered. And I need a little more. Let's see, I had um, rain and ice and sleet today where Courtney is like um, over 10 degrees warmer than I was and I'm only an hour away from her. So once I got halfway, the roads were really good, but before that, they, the main road was good, but my side roads were covered with ice. But over a 10 degree difference in an hour's drive. So we're just brushing back and forth with our rust and getting them covered nice because then our red's going to cover a lot better. Let's see what else is going on, Courtney. We're trying to get caught up yet. We're still a little behind on emails, um, responding to the posts. So um, she thinks that she'll be caught up, I think, by Monday, she posted, hopefully. So um, it was kind of hectic with the craft shows and then orders and then shipping the boxes. So we're um, just finishing up, getting caught up on everything. I still have um, one Christmas order that gets for Saturday, and then I have some orders for Monday to get done, and then a couple BISC orders yet, too. So, Cordy says if you're paid for, if you paid for something you're taking care of, it's been shipped or whatever needed to be done. But if it's um, you sent a message or it's on a post, th those are what she needs to go through and get caught up on. Um, so, by, by Monday, every, everyone should be caught up. If you're not heard from her and you had a question on something and we um, might have missed it, then 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 send us a message uh, Monday to let us know, hey, you missed this. Uh, messages are better than commenting on a post. Those posts tend to get lost when all the comments get on them. So if you can, if you have a question or you want something, it's better to actually message, send us a message. Um, she can keep track of those a lot easier. So I'm just going back and touching up where I already went because I want a nice solid coverage of my rust here. I know we had a couple inquiries for bisque. Um, as soon as I get this last Christmas order and then I've had two other bisque orders done, then I'll be working on those. Um, one was a wreath and a tree, if they asked for a, a truck. Really fine, if what? Um, yep, so anyone that asks for quotes on bisque, like um, maybe a bisque tree or a bisque um, wreath or the bisque truck, we'll, we'll be getting caught up with those too. So just give us a little bit of a chance here to breathe and we'll get everybody caught up and I'll get everything poured. Um, but we had to get these um, February boxes out, January boxes out and then the, the Christmas order. So it really kind of put us in a tight spot, which is good, but working full time, it makes it a little bit harder, but it's what I have to do to get my income bridged over to be able to do this full time. We got to build that in this income up to replace my, my income. So. <laughs> so I'm just touching him up here a little bit more where the, White is showing through my rust. And you can see I got some on my cheek because I must have been talking too much. So we'll have to fix that up with the white later. And you could switch back to your liner if you wanted, but I'm just going to use my big brush. 
And we're going to brush this out up here. You want a nice coverage with your rust. You don't want to see white through it because then you'll see the red through it. Well, you'll see the white through the red, I should say. So he's looking pretty good. So Courtney says we had a couple questions. She'll read them off to me, and then I'll see if I can give you guys some answers. So we had um, Sue asked about the liner brushes. Um, we do have liner brushes, but we also have a better um, quality of liner brush that's in the box that's coming. Um, it's, um, it was supposed to arrive today, but it it didn't. Um, the expected delivery was today, but I didn't I didn't get it. So unless it's there now, but otherwise I think it should come Monday. Um, then I'll have to get it to Courtney and she'll post it um, on the site. But the liner that's our Sue Sue B, um, a different Sue. Okay, so Sue L. Um, she said you, you get the box. So the, our beginner's brush set has a nice liner in it. It's an okay liner. It's this liner. Um, my favorite liner is the Silver Falcon liner, but it's hard to get the Silver Falcon brushes. Um, we're, we have a new brush line, and it's the brushes that I tested, and there's a 5.0 liner in there, and it's a um, really good liner. I can look and see if I have it in my bucket here. I might have it. They're coming. So they're, they're coming. Um, they should have been here today, but they didn't make it today. Let's see. So um, this is the five, this is the, the Silver Falcon liner, the one that I really, really like. It's a 5-0 um, Silver Falcon Onyx 4585. This, it's a beautiful liner. We got these at the show last August. Um, they What we had sold already will we'll, we will be going to the show in April in Ohio, so we'll try to get um, this exact one again. It's like fifteen dollars. So yeah, last time they were fifteen dollars. So it is more expensive, but it's it's a beautiful liner. Um, so that's the Silver Falcon Onyx. I just love that liner. Um, we're getting. I don't think I have one in here. I think they're at home. Um, the other one that I'm getting, it's. It's close to the quality of this one. I, I would compare it to this one. Um, it's this is a good liner, but and this is like the best liner. So the other one is it's close to the best liner. So Courtney will get those posted as soon as we get those. Um, I think we got quite a few of those too. I got extra ones. So. <laughs> okay, so we got our rust. I'm gonna wash out my. Um, rust here, and we're going to switch over to our red. So she said we got a couple more questions. Um, Chuck is here. He, how you do your edges so neat and clean? Um, so the edges to get them that neat, like I I did the liner first, and with my talking, I kind of gobbed it up here, and I gobbed it over here. Um, but yep, I, I used the liner first, and actually I'm going to do that with the red again, and I'm just using my liner, and this is it's a it's a decent quality liner. It's like I said, it's not the best. It's not the um, Silver Falcon one, but it's still a good liner. And that's our um, Royal Majestic 4595. It's a 50 liner. Um, it, it's got a pretty good tip on it. I mean, I, I wouldn't complain about it at all. I, I I like it. It's it's very affordable. It's in our beginner's brush set. Um, it's a, that which is a nice set of beginner's brushes. It's not your cheap brushes from um, the big box stores. It's just a nice um, nice, nice line of brushes, not your best and not your cheapest. They're just like right in the mid, mid range. They are the same brushes that I use um, to dry brush with on the show and at home. So they, they're, that beginner's um, brush set has that. You can also buy this liner and the dry brushes separate on Brenda's Brushstrokes and Um Cordy says she'll add the link. Um, so we'll go back to the line. So to get a nice steady line, you want you want to rest your piece on a stable um, surface. So I'm I'm resting my piece on this surface and I have a hold of it. Then you want to also your painting painting line hand. You want to rest that. So like depending upon where you're painting, I'm resting my little finger on the the scarf here. 
and then I start over in the middle, not in the middle of the mitten, but maybe like an eighth of an inch away, and I draw towards where I want my red to be, and I just merge until I can see my, that my red is lined up with my rust and the white, and I'm just drawing it towards me. And, and not talking helps. So that, that's how I get a nice straight line, is, is I have my piece nice and solid, and then you have your painting hand nice and solid. So we'll line this guy out. And then we'll come back just like we did with the rust and um, fill it in with the bigger brush. If, if you, I mean, if I was at home doing this, I would probably use the bigger brush just because i am done this for so many years, I, I can. Um, but I would say for the average person or the beginning person, and depending upon the area, I, I would go ahead and do it with, line it out with the, with a nice liner brush because you can see you can get a nice, Nice line. So now I turned him a little bit, but I'm still, now my little finger is not resting on him, but my um, fourth finger is resting on him. So you just, you need to have your piece nice and solid and you have to have your painting hand nice, nice and solid too. And again, I'm starting not on the line where I want it to be, but I'm starting in the scarf and merging over to that line because then I can see right where my paint is and if I need to go further or if I went too far. And then I want to brush that out because I don't want any ridges on there. And I'm going to turn him. Again, I'm going to start it in that scarf and merge over to meet up with that rust. And you kind of have to have, to have a, a pretty good brush to do this. You, you can't really do it with a really $2 brush. Although these brushes aren't that bad of a price, right? This, this guy? He's about the five dollar range. And they can get the cheaper than this one for free. They just have to wait until the next batch. And then Cordy says if you would want to add brushes to your um, monthly bis box, they they ship for free. We cover the postage on that. You just have to um, email her and let her not email her, just message her, and then she'll add that to your invoice. And when your invoice comes on the first. Um, then you'll see that on there with your BIS box. Anytime you want to add, as long as it fits in that BIS box for that month, you can add it and it, we will ship it. They can always get brushes to fit. Um, generally, brushes always fit. Sometimes some of the paint will fit as long as it's not a huge amount. It kind of depends upon the pieces that are in the box and how much room there is. So again, I'm, you can see I'm still resting that piece on the table and I'm resting my painting hand on my piece. That's really important for getting nice straight lines. And then I'm just brushing that paint out. And again, I, I don't start right at the line because if I did, sometimes you can't judge that, like you'll be in the white or you'll be way far away. So I, I like to start away from it and then merge towards it. That way they line up real nice. Do we have any other questions, Courtney? Yeah, I think Cook asked where in Ohio the show is. I think it's Hamilton, but I'm not sure. Um, so Courtney says Chuck asked where the show is in Ohio, Hamilton, in, in Ohio, in April. Uh, I believe it. She believes it's in um, Hamilton, Ohio, or or close to it. Um, you could just type on like on the internet, do a Google search, um, Ohio Ceramic Show 20. 20 and it should come up. And usually there's a page and then you can click um, on there to see who the vendors are going to be. Um, we're actually going to that show this year because it seems like there's a lot of interest in that area and more vendors there than our Milwaukee show has. So I've just turned him and now I'm just going to keep continuing around to get my red lined up with my rust. And then I want to brush it out so I don't have any rivers and ridges. Yeah, I'm 
we'll just keep going right around. So you can see how nice the um, red is covering compared to when we did the red on the um, putt snowman right over the top of the white. It took several um, coats to get that so the white isn't showing through it. The rust just really, really helps that. And it could be terracotta, um, just a shade of rust that don't have to be the Doc Holiday rust exactly. You just need a rust, a shade of rust. So I just want to get this out a little further. And then let's see, we're going to get his little scarf around his face. And again, I start away from it and merge towards it. That way you can line it up really well. And there's where I was talking and got the rust on his cheek, but we'll fix that when we're done. And I just keep grabbing my barnyard red and working my way around. I actually should have put, put some rust on his um, nose for his carrot. I just like to use the rust for the carrot on the snowman. Any other questions, Courtney? Or do you don't think we got any other questions? So is everybody working on um, projects for the because it's winter and you're bored and can't get outside to do stuff or just working on your boxes? So I'm just going to keep turning him and anchoring him to the table and lining out our red here. So we do have our videos saved on um, Facebook under uh, my page where the um, video tab is. It's just on the toolbar underneath the picture. And then Courtney's um, putting them on YouTube also, but we're a little behind with those because she has to edit those before they go on there. Um, so she'll be getting those eventually too so that they're always on there. You can always refer back to them. Because even if you're not painting this exact piece, I would hope that um, what I'm doing, you'll still get tips from as far as painting tips, and you could still learn things from it. So we have all our red lined out, so I'm going to wash up my little brush, and I'm going to go to my bigger red that I had started with and realized I needed to line it out first. So now I'm just going to brush my red, my barn red, back and forth with my bigger brush. Um, you had a question, why did you do the rust first? Um, Courtney says we have a question, why did I use the rust first? Um, I, I like to use the rust first. It gives the red, it's easier to get your red to cover better. Um, when we started, we had done the putt snowman and I didn't do his little button, his little red button with the rust first, and you can see the white. You can see the white through the red, and it takes more coats of red. Um, red is just a hard color, usually with painting, um, even with glazing. Um, red can be a hard color to get to come out red, although it's better than it used to be years ago. So the rust just helps your red cover better. Um, you can see that you really can't see through it. If we had white under there, it would take probably four four coats of the red to get this red instead of the one or two that it's going to take. So you'll see that I almost always use rust under my, any any red. It just makes life easier as far as how many coats of red it ends up taking versus not using the rust. I think it makes a, a, a deeper, more truer red too. Just It just helps the red cover better. But that's that's me. That may not be how you feel, but that's what works for me. Like I said, there's no right and wrong way. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. So we just want to brush out our red so we don't have any ridges. And 
And I got to turn them. And you don't want to like really brush and flicker um, spots so you get red spots all over your white. You want to control your brush. You want to probably have strokes that are two inches back and forth. You don't want to like really whip it around like that because you'll have red splattered everywhere. So we're just going to get our red on the rest of it here. So you can see how nice that's covering. So if, if I would have done that right over the white, it would it, you'd still be seeing white through it. And you can see a little bit of rust through it, but it doesn't take much to touch it up. So I just want to go back and make sure I got a nice coat of red where it's dry. And when you're antiquing, it, it's a little more forgiving because um, the antiquing will cover up some of your mistakes, but you really, you really want to just do a nice job anyway. So Cordy says we've got a couple more questions. Um, so the question is, would you use the rust if you're using a garden at red? Yep, I do. Um, but like I said, that's just me. You, you don't have to. Usually any red, um, sometimes orange, sometimes the oranges won't cover really well either. I'll use the rust even for those. If I start with the orange and see that it's not covering covering real well, I'll do rust underneath that orange too. So I'm just making sure we got him covered really well. And you can see it's pretty much one coat, just a little bit of touch up here and there. So we'll let that dry. And I'm going to go back to my liner and I'm going to get some rust on his little nose here. And again, I'm resting him, my hand, this hand that's holding him is resting on the table and he's resting in there nice and solid. And I'm resting this painting hand right, right on his um, belly. And I'm starting at about 1 o'clock and just bringing my little liner brush around. So now i got to be careful here so I don't get my hand in the red because it's not quite dry yet. Any other questions? Yep, it's a good, it's a good, it's a nice, it's a deeper red. It's not a bright, real bright red. It's just a nice um, dark red. I got some silver on there. So we got his little carrot nose all nice and rust. So now we're going to get some, uh, we're going to do his eyes. So for the eyes, I'm going to start with a little drop of black. Um. Yep, so Chuck asked what qual what paint we're using. I'm using the Duncan acrylic stains, and I also have some Doc Holidays that we used from our first box, but then we had trouble. Um, Doc Holiday was out of stock a lot of the time, so we switched mainly to the Duncan. I use Duncan, Doc Holiday, and Mako. They're all great brands of paint. They're made for ceramics. They paint very well. Um, you use less coats compared to the big box stores paint. Um, even my sister, who's not a painter, helped me paint some base coat, some things last week, and she um, found out the difference <laughs> and did not like the box store paint because it can take four or five coats, and your ceramic paint is going to take one or two coats. So there's a big difference. Um, all, all the brands are good. The Duncan, the Doc Holiday, and the Mako. It's just that each company has their own colors and shades. Uh, like Doc Holiday has a lot more of the Wood, woodland animal type shades. Um, so it, it all depends what shade you're looking for, and that's why I, I kind of use all of them because I, I like Doc Holiday's Midnight. I like um, Duncan's Real Red. Uh, I like Lime um, Mako's Lime Burst. It, it all it all depends on the shade that you want. If you're really picky with it, and I, I kind of get picky with the shades, so I, I actually use all of them. We've just had trouble. 
um, getting the supplies for all of them. Um, Doc Holliday has gotten better over the last few months, so um, they've changed ownership and they're, they're getting um, working on getting them restocked. So it's it's getting better. So now I got my black and I put my little drop of water. I dipped my brush in the water and thinned out my black. So now I want to get his little eyeballs. And I um, will do him just like I did on the piggy bank eyes and the other eyes. We did a piggy bank um, eye video to show how, how to do eyes. They were bigger. So I, I start at it out at about 10 o'clock and bring my liner down right around the edge of the eye. And I'm more worried about the outside line than the inside line because the, the inside we're going to fill in. It's the outside line that you want to be the way you want it. So I'm just getting it right on the outside. And I brought that up to about 2 o'clock. And, and that doesn't matter that it's thicker and thinner. On this inside part, I just want to make sure that my outside line is where I want that outside line. So I'm going to grab my black again and go to my other eye. And starting out about 10 o'clock, bring that down again. And again, I'm using that nice liner, that um, Royal Majestic um, 504595. And the other one that we're um, Cordy will be posting is an even better one. So you may want to, we have them both, it's just that there will be a price difference. So now I'm starting over here at about 1 o'clock, and I'm going to come down, get that outside eye right where I want it. And we kind of got to turn him here. And I'm not worried about that inside. That's going to look ugly until we're done. I just want to get the outside lined up really nice. So sometimes the lines take a little more work. This one's taken a little more work than the first one. So I got him. Now you can see that's pretty ugly on, on the center of him compared to the other one, but that's okay because we're going to cover that up. What you're more concerned about is where your white meets the outside of the black, and that's what you want lined up, a nice line on. That inside of the eye, don't worry about that. If that's ugly, that's okay. So now I'm going to... Um, dip my brush in my water and thin out my white here. And you could take new white or you can use what you have on your plate or there already. So I'm just going to thin out what I have here. Load up my brush. And now I want to bring my white. I'm going to start up here like at 10 o'clock again. Bring it along my black. And I want the outside of that to meet up the black to leave just a little black line. So I'm going to use my white to straighten out my black on the inside where it's not pretty. So we're just going to bring that down. And you kind of want it about the same width, that white, all the way around. So I got it a little thin on the top, but that's okay. We'll fix that when we put the rest of the black in. So I want to make that black kind of equal thickness all the way around the whole eye of that's already painted, like from the 10 o'clock to the 11 o'clock position. So now I use that white to straighten out the inside of that black line where it was kind of ugly. So now I have a nice outside black line and a nice inside black line. So we're going to do the same thing on this side, and you'll be able to see it more because there's more black gobbed up. So we're just going to, now we want to make the black on this one match the black on that one. And you have to turn them, get them so it's handy for you.
So I'm just concentrating on my black. I'm not concentrating on the inside part of the eye, just the outside where the white and the black are meeting. And then the inside, I'll just brush that out. So now when I look at it, this one's just a little bit heavier than that one, so I want to go back and bring my white out just a little bit further into the black. And then I'm going to touch this one up where I can see some black through there yet. And then I'm going to paint about half of that eye from the bottom up in white. And the same with this one. So they're pretty close, not, not quite. I'd probably do it just a little bit more. If you mess them up, Paint the whole thing white again and just start over. But if you have a good liner, that'll, that'll be um, part of your success with your eyes is having a really good liner. And then thinning that paint a little bit so it's like ink. It'll um, just flow a little bit better for you. So I got to get a little more white on my inside here. I can see the black through it. And as long as I'm doing white, I'm going to touch up this over here where I got the rust, red and the rust on the little cheek. And up here. But you can see I still have my hand that's holding him resting on the table, just holding him nice and tight. And then that painting hand is resting on him too. You can straighten out your lines. So I was trying to let this dry so I can put a little more white on here. There they go. So they're they're pretty pretty close to even. So now I'm going to wash out my brush, and I'm going to grab our medium, our Duncan OS four five seven medium blue. And Courtney always has the supply list um, linked with the. Cordy does not, not today. She usually does. <laughs> Cordy usually has the supply list linked with the live. Um, it, live. She'll get it on there. <laughs> yeah, we're um, by Monday it'll be on there. So I'm just dipping my paint brush again in that water until there's water in that brush. So see how that drop? It dropped on there. So I'm going to mix that with my blue just to thin that out so it flows better for the eyes. And then I'm going to draw my brush through it. Loading that brush liner brush up with paint, turning it clockwise between my two fingers. Then I usually take and do one more wipe on my foil just to unload it a little bit. So now we want a nice little blue line going through there. So we'll start up here about 10 o'clock and bring that down into the white, but we're going to leave some of the white. And so the eye probably goes from about 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock with that blue, maybe 2.30, 3 o'clock. I start in the white and merge it over to that black and the white, leaving the white at the very bottom there. And then I just fill this in just a little bit. Kind of want a nice round, rounded look that goes with the shape of the eye, which whatever eye you're doing, if it's round or oval, this guy's a little bit oval and tilted so we got the blue is a little it's just a little bit tilted too so I'm bringing that right up to the black and then I'll just fill that in a little bit with some more blue and we don't worry about that inside how ugly that looks because the next color will be black and the black will cover that ugliness up we just worry about where the blue is meeting the white and the black now so I'm back at my um, 10 o'clock Merge it over to that black. And I want that one to start about the same level as the other one and finish on the other side at about the same level. And then you want to look at them. So he's got a lot more white than the other side, so I need to take a little more white out of there.
So then I look at him again, and I want to compare the inner, where the inner eye on both sides, where the white, the blue and the black, where they like meet each other, and I want that kind of level. Same with the outside. Looks like we need a little more on this guy on the outside. And I'm starting inside that blue and merging over to the outside so I can get my line where I want it. And we'll get a little more blue in there so we don't see through the white, the white through it when we're done. So you can see that the eye, the top part is still kind of ugly with the blue in there. It's not like a perfect line or anything. You don't have to worry about that until now. Um, our next color will be our black, so I'm going to wash out that brush again. And I'm going to come over here to my black and put just a little bit of water in there, get that thinned out again. Got some glitter showing up here. So now I'm going to start at, I'm going to, he has a nice peak, so that's where I'm going to start and I'm going to get my outside part of my eye and I'm going to come down to the blue and then do my nice loop around and bring it back up again. So I'm matching up my black lines there. And then you can fill that in. So now all that ugliness is getting covered up. And you just want to look at your where your black and your blue meet. And like right now, there's a gap between them. I don't want that, so i got to touch that up. And I want that nice curve on that black, just like we have in the blue, which is pretty much the same curve as the eye, the bottom of the eye itself. So now where my blue and my black is, there's um, not quite enough, there's like hardly any black there, so i got to try to um, get a little bit of black in there. We might have to touch that up a couple times. So there, now he's got his nice little eye. So now we'll do his other eye. We'll again start at that there's a nice point on this one, so we will start at like the 12 o'clock top. Bring that down to the about the same level as the other one, meeting up the black. Getting that nice little loop in there. And we'll do the same on the side. Fill in that black. So now this eye needs a little work yet. So his blue is a lot higher on the outside than that one, so I want to get that matched up a little more. So I'm going to start in my black, merge it down to the blue. So now I want to take a look at him. I got some blue showing through here yet, so I want to cover that up with my black. And I got a piece of glitter in there, but we're going to leave that so I don't smear my black. And I want this outside to come down just a little bit more. And I got to get a little water in my paint. It's not flowing here. So there, they look pretty even. This one's a little bit more than this one, so you could you could leave it at this point. It would be okay, but I'm gonna 
mess with it, of course. Get it down just a little bit more to match the other one. Well, there we go. So there, he's got his cute little eyes. So now we're going to work on the little whites of his eyes. And I'm going to put a little, I'm going to actually have to take a new drop of paint because we're getting kind of dried up here. What time we got, Courtney? 8.15. 8.15. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I just took my white and I got a new drop and I I'll put that drop of water, put my brush in the water and just thin that out a little bit. So now you could touch up any white that you needed to touch up around his eyes, but he looks pretty good. There's a little bit here I could touch up if I wanted just to get that line more straighter. But sometimes when you touch up, you make more of a mess than if you had just left it alone. So I'm going to just take my little, run that through there. I'm going to put my little, I wait till my black is all dry. I'm going to put my little um, highlights in there. So when you're doing highlights, you want to do them either both eyes on the left side of both eyes or on the right side of both eyes or the center of both eyes. You don't want to do the left on one and the right on the other or the inside on both because then they're going to, that, that's what makes them look cross-sided. So put them, your highlights either on the right side of both eyes or on the left side of both eyes. Um, I, I switch them up. Sometimes I do the left side and then sometimes I do the right side. So again, I'm just going to use my liner. I'm going to push down, pull it towards me, and lift up before I get out of the blue. I don't want to get my highlight into the white because then it will be white on white, and you won't be able to really see it. So I'm going to stop in the blue area, start in the black, push down, draw it towards you, and lift up. So again, I'm in the right side of the eye, push down, draw it towards you, and lift up. And that's a little bit thicker than I like. And this one isn't as thick, so we're going to go back and make this one a little thicker. Um, I'm still using that um, Royal Majestic 459550 liner. So I'm just going to get this one a little wider on top. So now I'm going to dip in my white with my brush or you could use your ball stylus and you want a little bit of a dot right at the top of that C stroke. You don't want it a lot bigger than the C stroke. You want it just a tad bigger. And you want them both about the same size as each other. Um, the ball stylus will really Help that, and that's coming in one of your boxes. It came in your lap. Oh, I should be using it. What am I doing? I was thinking they didn't have it. They don't have it. They get it in. Oh, so it's in your boxes today. Okay, I'm messed up. It's for the in the penguin box. So in your penguin box, you actually have the ball styluses, and if you'd want, you could use um, one of the smaller ones and dip it in your white paint and do your dots on your eyes. But we were going to do it with the penguins. But you do have it in your boxes today, so if you're not, you haven't painted these yet, you can use that to do your dots on your eyes. So I'm going to wash out my brush. I'm going to drag it through my black here, and I'm just using the liner brush again. And I'm going to put a couple little black, um, oh, they're not even, they're maybe an eighth of an inch, little black tick marks on his little carrot here just for some little character for it. So there you go. He's all painted up. So we're just going to let him dry for a minute. I'm going to wash out my brushes. Um, if you wanted, you could put some pink or some chalk, dry brush it on his cheeks a little bit. And now we're going to do the antiquing. Um, could I get clean water, Courtney? Please. Thank you. Oh, so Courtney says, Ross Witha joined us, and it's your 80th birthday. Well, happy birthday. Thank you for joining us. Oh my goodness, 80 years and you're painting. Good for you. Love to hear that. So now we're going to just let him dry just a little bit. Um, and actually, I did put some pink on his cheeks if you want. Um, I just dry brushed a little bit of light pink. Um, 
This one I did not, so you can see there is a difference. So it's kind of up to you. So what we're going to do is get our gold. And I'm just using our UM951. It's a solid gold. It's by Duncan. And I'm going to shake that up. And you can paint this on straight or you can paint it on with water, a little bit thinned out like you did the color wash. If you thin it out like the color wash, it's not going to be as strong as of an antique. Um, so you can see, we'll come back here. So this one, it was painted on the whole, you paint the whole piece and then you wipe it off. So this was painted on the gold as straight paint. It wasn't thinned at all with water. And you can see when you wipe, even when you wiped it off, there's still a lot of gold seeing through. In this one, the gold was thinned with some water, which is how I'm going to do it tonight. And I, again, I just dip my brush in the water and dip it in the paint and then brush it on. And we'll do the front side and then we'll do the back side. You don't want to do the whole piece because it, it'll, it, the front will dry before the back does and then it'll be darker um, gold than what the front is. So you can see the straight painting of the gold and wiping it off, you get a lot more gold on it. And if you thin it with some water, you get a less gold. So it kind of depends what you want. So I take my gold, which is, again, the Duncan Solid Gold UM951. And I just put it right on my foil. And it'll take a, a pretty good size pile. Then besides that, I have a piece of um, T-shirt material. You could use a sponge also. Um, I, I like the t-shirt material for the antiquing and then you want some clean water and then I'm just going to take my round eight brush and my gold and I'm going to dip my brush in my water and that'll give me some it just thins that out a little bit so this part that's thinned out here which I got red in my brush the way it looks I'm gonna need to wash that out better so when you're washing out your brush, you want to brush back and forth. I'll show you that. You're brushing back and forth on the bottom. If you have that brush cleaner, you can put that in there, that Harold's brush pad. You don't want to go up and down jamming that brush in that water because you're going to break your bristles off in your ferrule. You want to brush back and forth. And I'm just rubbing the brush on the bottom of the water, the bowl. So that gives my bowl, my brush clean without wrecking my um, bristles. So then I just dry it. And now I'll probably dip back in there and mix that in there. Get that, just get some water. So it's about not quite 50 50, that gold. And now I'm going to grab my little um, cuddle up here and get the glitter off him. And now I'm just going to brush that on there. And I'm going in that thinned out part. So this gets messy. You may want to use um, wear gloves. I'm just brushing this gold on. So now as I use up what I have thinned out, I just dip into my water again and then brush it on there. I'm just going to get the whole bottom. And we're just going to get this whole front. I'm going to stick my fingers in his bo um, bottom hole there. And we're going to brush right over him. Grab some water and get it in there. Brush it out. Just brush your silver, your gold out. You could use silver, gold. You could use um, any color. Actually, you don't even have to be a metallic. You can use, um, you could use black. You could use brown. You could use blue. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want um, at your antique, whatever you want in your cracks, your crevices. So we got that on there. I'm gonna put that to the side. Now I'm gonna take my cotton and I'm gonna dip it in my water and wring it out. So I just dipped it in there and wrang it out really good. And now I'm just going to take and wipe. I'm just wiping off the gold. And you let it in the crevices, and you can let as much or as little as you want. Get the bottom here. And you want, you want a nice even um, layer of your antiquing. So you can see I just wrang it out again. So you can see you can wipe a lot off, or you, you don't have to wipe a lot off. You can leave a lot 
a lot of the gold on. It's really preference. Good question. Is it similar to color washing? Not really. Uh, Cordy said the question, is it similar to color washing? I mean, it, it kind of is similar, but not really. Um, well, I, and you take away color when you color wash, too. You could say it's similar because you put it on and you wipe it off. So now I want some more out of his eyes here. So you just let as much gold on him as what you would like. Oh, Cordy says I'm gravitating south so you guys can't see me. So I, I do like to get a little more out of his eyes. And you can just wet your rag and wring it out. No, I'm too far north, she says. So now I'm actually going to take my little um, T-shirt. And you can use the sponge too, but the T-shirt seems to do a more even removal. Um, I'm just going to wipe his eyes a little. Wherever you want it wiped a little more, like especially the eyes, you can strip it right over your um, finger. So now I have his front pretty much the way I want it. And you can leave more on there than what I, I did. It's up to you. So now I'm just going to flip around to the back, bring my paint back, dip in my water with my brush, and just get some water on it. Mix that up a little bit and just kind of overlap it to the front a little bit where we left off. Um, Cordy asked what happens if it dries on. It, it gets harder to wipe off. Um, you can keep rubbing, but sometimes it gets to the point where you can't get it off. Um, she asked, Courtney asked if you can paint over it then. Um, you probably could just start all over. So you don't want it, it to get real dry. That's why I'm doing half and then the other half. So now I'm just going to take my little damp cloth again, and now I want to match my front, my back to my front. So I'm just wiping it off. And so you can see you could you could you could leave that much on if you want where the front I have more off. I kind of want it's all in how much accent color you want on yours. It's up to you. You can wipe off or leave on as however much you want. And then don't forget to wipe your bottom. So this is called antiquing and this this was very, very popular back in, I would say, the 80s um, and before even. So now I just want to make sure my front and back has the same amount of gold wiped off. And then I want to get his bottom because you want your bottoms. Now you can see that's already drying on there, so that's coming off harder. I actually have to rub pretty good to get that to come off. And then you switch to a new, a clean spot on your cloth. And then you can just keep wiping it and get in it to where the it matches the rest. Can you have a question? Um, so we just got him pretty much where I want him. And then we would just make sure he's nice and even. You let a lot, your color, your antique is mostly in, in your indents, in your crevices. So Courtney says we got a question. When do you antique or what kind of pieces would you antique? So Cordy says the question is when would you antique and what kind of pieces would you antique? It's really up to you. Um, I don't know if that's the detail. The, what do you mean? I think that's a good piece with the detail. Um, so if you're antiquing a piece, you probably want a piece with some details in it, like the, the gold went into the scarf. Um, like you can see, it's real smooth here. Um, and even now, if I wanted more on here, I can go back and, and paint more on. I mean, smooth areas, just like dry brushing, um, textured areas are better than um, smooth areas. So you, you can still let more on there. It's just a little bit harder. It doesn't stay on there like it does in the crevices. But you can let more. You can see that there's more on there now, but I'm going to wipe it off because I don't want that much on there. It's, it's really a matter of preference of, as to when you antique or when you um, don't. This just worked really well with the gold because it's in the 
in the crooks and crannies and it's on top. And so there's like a gradual layer compared to, um, I don't think you'd want to put the gold on the bottom and then dry brush over it. You probably could though, which I think I've done that with my um, brewer, brewer type snowmen. Although no, I put the navy on the bottom and dry brush the silver over the top. It's just an, it's just another way of doing things. And um, I don't antique much actually anymore. I do more of the dry brushing and color washing. Um, but a lot of people asked about antiquing, so that's why we chose, I chose to show everyone how to color wash and how to um, antique and what, I mean, that's basically the difference um, for these pieces. Let me see, I'll grab our putts. So the putts is color washed. And you, I guess you could say you could see the dark color underneath that white. We're here, we have the gold on top. So it depends if you want your highlight in your crevices on top or underneath looking. They each have their own look. It's kind of what whatever you prefer. Um, you would want to seal this guy though with the aerosol sealer um, when you're done or a brush on sealer. Anything with for snowmen, I, I prefer the satin sealer because it's got a little bit of a gloss to it and then that gives the snowman a little bit of a shine. So then you could seal this and sprinkle some red glitter on him or the silver glitter or the white glitter or you could put snow on him too, that's up to you. So that's that's your difference between antiquing and color washing. So that was a good educational box. Um, our next box is our penguins, and we'll be doing, um, we're going to actually paint out the penguin stack, and we're going to color wash the two little, or not, um, we're going to dry brush, we're going to paint, base coat them, the little, two little penguins black, and then we're going to paint those out. Not We're, we're going to dry brush, we're going to, oh my God, it must be time to quit. The little penguins we're going to base coat black and then we're going to dry brush them. And then the big penguins we're going to paint out and that way you can see the difference between dry brushing and painting out um, with like the same colors because they're black and white. Well, and I got silver glitter everywhere here. Um, so these little guys we're going to base coat black and then we're going to dry brush them. And the boxes do have written instructions in case you don't have access to the internet or if written instructions work better for you. So now our boxes in the future will also have written instructions for the projects. So these guards are dry brushed. So along where the black and the white meets, there's a lot softer of a look. So if compared to this guy that we're going to paint out, this is a very um, stark line where the black and the white meets. So that's that. this box is to show you the difference between bri dry brushing and painting things out. Although I did dry brush a little bit on their um, beaks and on their cheeks, but basically the whole piece was um, dry brushed with the little guys except for the cardinals. Those guys were painted out. So that'll be a good, um, good box to show you the difference between painting something and dry brushing something. But we're also going to use the ball styluses um, that were part of your extra for this box. So this will be our box for next week. Um, we still have some more that can ship Monday. I'll have more penguins available. So if anyone wants a box, you can still purchase it on Brenda's brushstrokesandbiss.com or you can message us and Courtney can um, get it to you. And we'll start painting these guys next week. If you want, you can paint your white and then your black out. Um, they're actually pretty quick and easy to paint. These guys you can, the little guys, you can just base coat the whole thing's black if you want to get ahead of the game. Even even their little hats, because that's all dry brushed. And let's see, what else do we got going on? Cordy says to stick around for a minute, because we're going to give something away. So today she posted the box, and ev everyone that posted made comments of what they thought it was. And... No one got the exact guess, but we had some close guesses. So one of our problems has been getting the Doc Holiday paints, enough of them. They're out of stock or you can't get them. But we were able to get the baseline of Doc Holiday colors, um, like numbers 1 through 62. What? Oh, but if, um, so if they were, if Doc Holiday's discontinued them, we don't have them, but look at, we have 
Doc Holliday paints. That's what was in the box, Doc Holliday paints. Numbers 1 through 68. <laughs> 2 through 68. 1 through 62. Oh, my God. Time to quit. So, so we have Doc Holliday colors. Hopefully, we'll be able to continue getting them. And as long as we can get them, we'll have them. They are already on Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com. Courtney already has them on there. Um, and as of 2020, all of our paints, our acrylic stains, baseline, are twenty, are three dollars for 2020 going forwards because we're ordering in enough bulk. So that's what was in that box was the whole box was what 258. 200, I think she had 258 bottles of Doc Holiday paints, and they are on Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist .com, $3 a bottle. We can ship them in your February Bist box to get free shipping. You'll just need to message Courtney what colors you want. Don't check out on the website. You'll have to message her the color numbers that you want. So Courtney took the names of people that guessed paint, paint and put them on the forum and got them in my little hand here and we're gonna shake them up because no one guessed exact so we just used whoever had paint and we have Debbie Thomas oh, cool. and Debbie Thomas is gonna get three bottles yes, the black and white and of Doc Holiday paint it will be the black the white and you can message Courtney what your favorite color is and she will ship you those three colors and you'll have to message her what your mailing address is well you, you probably have that Oh, Courtney has your mailing address. So Debbie Thomas, you guessed paint, which was close. It was Doc Holiday paint. We now have Doc Holiday paint. So we had lots of guesses from color wheels to lamps to all kinds of things, but it's Doc Holiday paint. We have a pretty good stock of it. We're going to hopefully be able to keep keep it in stock. Um, so Debbie Thomas, you won three bottles of Doc Holiday paint that we will ship to you at our cost. Um, just let Courtney know what your favorite color is, and you'll get a bottle of black, white, and whatever your favorite color is. And, then get one more away. and Courtney wants to give one more set away. Um, so Courtney says to comment what products you would like to see us carry. And she will pick a winner on Monday from whoever comments what other products she would like to see us carry. I know um, a friend of mine asked if we had the brush on glitter, so I added that to our wish list for our next order. Um, so com comment on this video live of what other products you'd like to see us carry, and Courtney will put your name in a drawing, and you will also get three bottles of Doc Holiday paint in the black, the white, and you'll be able to pick out whatever is your favorite color. So there you go. That's it for tonight. Glad you guys enjoyed um, having fun with guessing what was in that box. It was heavy and it got lost and <laughs> went to the wrong address, which happened to be Courtney's old address. And we got it and she's got it on the internet on Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com. So we now have Mako, Duncan, and Doc Holiday 1 through 62. Um, we'll try to add the other colors, their higher priced colors. And if we can get them, we'll get those added on um, in the near future. So list away what else you guys want us to carry and we'll make a list and Courtney will do a drawing for everyone that posted. Um, like our videos and share them and help spread the word and we'll be able to keep keep being here and adding stuff, adding stuff and have a great week you guys and um, we'll see you next week with our penguin boxes. Have a penguin party. <laughs> Bye.